Good evening, church. We'll be calling ourselves to worship by declaring Psalms 91. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be a shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall I trample under feet. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore will he deliver me. He will set me on high, because I have known his name. I shall call upon him, and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble, he will deliver me and honor me. With long life will he satisfy me, and show me his salvation." So shall it be for us and our families in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. El Shaddai. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We praise thy name, O Lord. Exalt thy name on high. Exalt thy name on high. As we sing, Hallelujah.
Are you looking for your own company that will join you in prayers just like the apostles did in Acts chapter 4 verse 23? Then join a daily prayer chain that meets on the Church Prayer Conference line 587-400-8496 from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Also join the Church Corporate Prayer Meeting this Friday from 11 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. This meeting will hold on JOIC Zoom line. To this end, please ensure that your name is listed on the Church WhatsApp database, where the Zoom link will be sent. To get your name on the WhatsApp database, please contact Pastor Jude after the service. Be a part of our daily devotional titled, Power to Triumph. It runs from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. from Monday to Friday on Sunny Adeni Ministries channel on YouTube and Facebook. We shall be taking the communion daily and pushing hard against the devil's agenda in this period. Do not miss your opportunity to live triumphantly. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, click on the notification bell and like and follow Sunny Adeni Ministries on Facebook as well. For everyone who will be paying their faith convention sacrifice, please make sure that you put it in the building projects section on the envelope. Online Sunday school classes for our kids ages 3 to 5, 6 to 9 and 10 to 13 has commenced and will continue every Saturday. The time is 5.30 to 6.15 p.m. via Zoom. The link shall be sent out to all parents to help their kids connect. This is a reminder to all JOIC workers and volunteers that the commitment form is due for submission to Pastor Jude on Sunday, March 14. Non-submission will be taken seriously. If you misplaced your copy, you can ask the ushers for a replacement. The family of Sister Salmatha and Sister Vivian will be dedicating their kids to the Lord at our Thanksgiving celebration service on Sunday, March 28, 2021. Let's pray along with them for successful baby dedications. Next Sunday at Joy Overflow is our Friendship Sunday worship service. As usual seating capacity in the church is restricted and each person will have to reserve their seats on first come, first serve basis, while all others will worship online. It is a day to bring a friend, a day of special ministration in drama and a day of word encounter. God bless you as you bring a friend. The service runs from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. All youths ages 14 to 25 shall be having their monthly meeting this Saturday March 20th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Here is poster for meeting. The Zoom link will be sent later. If you have not been added to the WhatsApp group, please see Sister Glory after this service. There shall be a Covenant Foundation JOIC membership class for all new members of this church on Monday, March 22nd via Zoom. Google invite and emails have been sent to those who are due to attend. Please respond when you receive them. There shall also be water baptism for those who have never been water baptized or those who want to do it again. The scriptures say in Mar 16 16, KJV, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. If you are interested, please write down your name with Pastor Jude Dyke after this service. We shall hold our first praise night of the year on Friday, March 26th from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. God bless you as you prepare to pay your debt of gratitude that night.
prayer, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you because you are here. Even before we got there, you've been here. We acknowledge your lordship. We acknowledge your power. We acknowledge you here because you are the world yourself. And we are here to learn from you. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you open our hearts, you open our minds to receiving from you. Holy Spirit, we pray even as you will be coming in form of words tonight, we pray you will enter our heart. We will not just, both the speaker and the listener, we will not just be the hearer alone, but the doer of the word. Spirit of the living God, we surrender everything to you. And we we'll pray that you take absolute control, both on land and online. We we'll pray because your presence is everywhere, in that room, in that car, in this place. We we'll pray that you will fill the place with your presence and your glory will be unchecked. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we silence any voice that is not of God. We decree and we declare the operation here null and void. In the name of Jesus. After all, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. As we have come here, we pray every one of us will exercise liberty in your presence. Your word will flow ceaselessly. At the end of everything, let no man be glorified but you. Let your name alone be glorified. Lord, do what you alone can do here. In terms of healing, either now or after, anyone that is heavy laden or burden with one care or the other, will pray as we have come to your presence in the fulfillment of your word. Such burdens shall be lifted up. In the name of Jesus, such pain will disappear. Even as we believe and will come before you, your word will do what your word alone can do. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Christ, I just feel like praying, and I believe God for, <clears throat> for him to take over the, uh, the Bible study tonight. And I won't take for granted the privilege given to me by our Father and the Lord um, to stand here, even though left for me, I would have loved to just sit down and learn. Uh, but <laughs> it's a privilege to stand before, before the people of God and to talk about the Bible and to talk about the Word of God. So I'm not taking it for granted, sir. And also I want to thank in absentia Sister Wumi as well and all the Bible study committee for the good job. Let's clap for the Bible study committee for, 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 for the good job. Trust me, you will not know what you have in your hand. All the effort, the extra miles that the, 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 prepare, uh, the person preparing it has actually gone to get that material ready. So we give God the glory for that committee and we pray that God will continue to give them revelation, strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, who can, who can remind me what our pastor taught us last week in the Bible study? What did we learn last week? It's a Bible study, so I'm free to talk, and I will try as much as possible to run through. So I will start calling names, right? It's Bible study. No, it's, it's online anyway. <laughs> so if I call your name, everybody, the whole world will know that I'm calling your name. So... <laughs> Please, what did we learn last week in 30 seconds? Who can remind us in summary? Just summarize it in 30 seconds, what we learned last week. If you don't learn it, if you can't get the answer, I won't tell you the answer and I will not move forward. Trust me, I won't. So, who is here to bail us out? What did we learn last week? Should I, should I start calling names? Don't worry, I will face this side so that you won't think I'm looking at you. <laughs> Maybe I should face this side. <laughs> what did we learn last week? I will take the time. I'm serious. What did we learn last week? 
Who is here to bail us out? Pastor is, is trying to build us out. But I won't take that. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I'm the umpire here. So, <laughs> please, from, the, from us that were here last week, what did we learn last week? Thank you, sir. Can I have. Yeah, please go ahead. Ah, sorry, I don't worry. Please go ahead. I can stand with you. And... Good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week, Bible service, uh, Bible topic was about servanthood mm. and about. Uh, leaning on God and uh, for God to use us to be servants and uh, I believe the pastor also referred to the Bibles as well mm. in terms of uh, David mm. in terms of uh, his brothers and being him being an anointed he has to be a servant mm. and uh, we had to really serve okay serve let, let's clap for, for even bailing us out. I want to, for having the confidence of bailing us out, I will clap for you. Thank you. God I, I don't have you. my, I don't have my, uh, no, you, you have done well. Here. You have done well. But you I, have done well. Yeah. I've even clapped for you for that. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, we have different types of servanthood. But what we learned last week was actually an introduction to kingdom servanthood. Kingdom, underline the word, kingdom servanthood. There are many people that serve in different sphere of life. But what we are referring to is limited or the scope of our discussion was about kingdom servanthood. Today, I'm just trying to build a building block on it because I wouldn't want to start building another block when we have not really founded ourselves on the real foundation of what we are discussing. That's why we talk about the introduction to kingdom servanthood. So today I'll be talking about the characteristics of Kingdom servanthood. The characteristics of kingdom. Somebody will ask you next week what you learned this week. Let us get it right now. Amen. Yeah, this is Bible study, so um, pardon me if I step on your toes. But today we're talking about kingdom servant, as I've said. As a means of introduction, I would like us to go through these scriptural verses, but uh, for the sake of this Bible study, if you can maybe go home and look at Philippians 2 5 to 11. Matthew 6, 33, we all know that. 4 Samuel 15, 22 to 23, and Matthew 24, 31 to 40. So if you have, to, please, when you go home, you can run through that. But as a means of introduction, I'll be reading from here. And it says, the foundation of Christian servants is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. There is nobody that can serve in the house of God successfully without the Holy Spirit. So I use the word successfully, without the help of Holy Spirit. Jesus was able to do all his work by the Spirit of God. Luke chapter 3, verse 22. So media, please, I would like you to run a little, because I've used my time in introduction. Luke 3, 22. And the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son. In thee, I am well pleased. So what came upon him? The Holy Spirit. Please follow so that we can do this journey together. So it was the Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus that Jesus was able to fulfill his earthly ministry. So it was the empowerment of the Holy Spirit on us that will be able to make us to serve in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, or in his vineyard as it were. So it is the help of the Holy Spirit. Everything a servant of God does must be under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is only the Spirit of God that, give, that can give the inner strength to serve, to serve in better, or to serve in more, or acceptably. It is the Spirit of God. He quickens our mortal body. We, see, we can see that in Romans 8, 11. A servant 
of God needs the Spirit of God to accomplish all tasks. Look at what it says here. I, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. John 14, verse 16. Let us begin. One. So if you look at it, Jesus himself promised us, in order for us to carry out this particular assignment that is handing, I mean, he was handing over to us, he said he was going to pray the Father to send the Holy Spirit to us. So it is compulsory for every child of God to have the Holy Spirit. In fact, it is not negotiable. In fact, there is no way you can, re- you can lead a successful Christian life without the help of the Holy Spirit. That does not mean that there will be, there will be no time where you err or you, 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 you make a mistake, as it were. You, in the process of serving, you, you make a mistake. It's possible. That, that does happen. But the Spirit of God in you will convince you of what you've said just now was wrong. Or how you reacted was wrong. Or where you've been, you were not supposed to be there. Or the company you keep is not helping you. The Spirit will tell you. That is the, what the Holy Spirit can help you to do in service in the house of God. When you are gossiping about someone, the Spirit will tell you what you are doing it is not right. The Bible says the Spirit bear witness with our spirit. There's a confirmation. So you can, it will tell you the truth. You can, be, you can have a strong head and say, I'm not going to tell him. After all, I'm older than him. After all, I'm more experienced than him. After all, I am this, I am that. You may have thousands and one reasons not to apologize, not to amend, not to make uh, adjustments to what you have done. But the Spirit will quicken you. When you fail to do that, then it will start backing out gradually. Gradually. A time will come that I will not even convince you again. That time is dangerous. Very dangerous. In fact, you, will come, you may come to church and sing like me uh, in the church. You may come and sing, but it's maybe some kilometers away from you. Uh, may God not allow that to happen to us in Jesus' name. So how do we know a kingdom servanthood, someone that serves in the kingdom? What are the characteristics? Am I pronouncing it very well? characteristics, right? Sorry, my, my, I'm biting my tongues. <laughs> Praise God. What, what, what exactly are the, the main features, the main characteristics of kingdom servanthood? And we'll be looking at a, about four or five or six of them tonight with God helping us. The first thing, the priority of a kingdom servant. What does a kingdom servant prioritize? more than any other thing. How do we know someone that is mindful of the kingdom of God as a servant of God? By the way, we were, all of us here know the definition of servant, right? Because our pastor did justice to that last week. Do we have anybody here that doesn't know the meaning of servant, of a servant? So I can praise God. Thank God all of us here uh, well, so we all know that. So the priority of a kingdom servant. Priority is defined as the fact of condition or being regarded or treated as more important. More important. It can also be said to be a thing that is regarded as more important than another. What are the priorities of kingdom servanthood? What are we trying to say here is that when you are trying to, when you have two options, um, can I go uh, and do this shift or can I come to church to serve? Mm, uh, shift. You have options. It's something that maybe is already a shift that has been planned, maybe a month of time. So that one I can understand. But you have option to select the shift or not to select the shift, right? It's one of those shifts that does come and say, hey, can anybody cover the shift? Are you willing to cover the shift? So you have option, you know, it's Bible study, and you have option for that shift. Which one would you choose? Sorry if I'm stepping on toes. It's necessary because it's the Bible study. What do you prioritize? Yeah, ha, this shift, I'm going to get $200 for going to this shift. $200 or 250 
if I go for this eight-hour shift, I'm going to get $250. If I come to Bible study, I will, I will even give offering. So I'm not getting. <laughs> so, um, uh, let me go for the shift. God will understand. I will pay tight, right? So, what are we prioritizing? What are we prioritizing? So if you prioritize things that you know are not, that are not having eternal values, more than the things of God, then something is, is wrong somewhere. So that's what we are looking at. A kingdom servant seeks to prioritize seeking and searching for who God is. Yeah? Joshua chapter 1, yeah? look at what it says. This book of the Lord shall not depart from their mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good sources. Psalm 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not see against thee. So, prioritizing the word of God over other things, shows that you are a, 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 a true kingdom servant. Number two, a kingdom servant must have a desire to search, to know, to possess, a passion for God. A passion for God. If someone needs to remind you uh, that, oh, you need to come to church, or you need to be reminded, or you need to be called, then you need to actually check your Christian life. If, if, if truly, if truly. Some people by default, they know, even if you don't, re- if, if pastor fails to send a message, by default. Because they've, they've, they have actually adjusted their life to that. By default. Praise God for their life. But if someone needs to now start calling, are you not going to come? What is going on? Ah, yes, we need to encourage ourselves in faith. That's true. But what do we prioritize? And that's what we are looking at. So we are talking about a kingdom servant, not just a church member. Please, correction. There's a difference between a kingdom servant and a church member. A church member. A, ch- a church member can afford to come on Sunday and next Sunday and just decide not to come. It's a church member. Praise God for their life. A church member can afford to just not pay tight. Maybe he's not convinced enough. He's a church member. But trust me, a kingdom servant, no option. That, so let's, let's, let's create that demarcation now. So what we prioritize is what... I, I don't even need anybody to tell me... I don't need a reminder to pay tight. Truly, to be told, I mean, for more than 20 years now, I don't think it's... It's like, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's part of life. It's lifestyle. Thank you, sir. It's lifestyle. It's lifestyle. So I, either I hear a sermon on the, on the altar or not, that won't stop me from. If I come to church or no, I'm, a, I'm on tree or I'm, I'm traveling, I, there's a way you can do a wire transfer. You can pay tight. Praise God. I'm not talking about tithe, so I'm just talking about priority. The kingdom servant must seek first the kingdom of God. We know that. That's Matthew 6, 33 talks about that. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And oh, so but he talks about that. The kingdom servant seeks his righteousness. We, we saw that. The parable of the fig tree, you see, this illustrates a point where about a second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, how soon it will be. Uh, you 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 were prepared. You were prepared for him. So you prioritize his coming. You are, you are concerned, preparing ourselves. We are preparing ourselves, prioritizing, preparing ourselves for his coming. And that is more important for us as believers. Therefore, our priority is to make his kingdom a principal thing and first among order in our lives. Our greatest priority is to enter his kingdom and thirst for his righteousness. Right? If I ask us, why, are we, why do we come to church? Why are we, why are we Christian in the first place? Uh, I think I would say 90%, if not more, 
we say that I, I can make heaven, right? That will be the first on the prayer on the list. Then other things can start following. The body first, the one that will top the list. I want to make heaven. So that will be the first. Why you became a Christian. But thank be to God. That should be our priority. We shouldn't lose focus on that. Eh? I, I was sharing, was it with the choir or so, someday. I said it would be, so, be so sad. In fact, it would be so miserable when Jesus comes and, I, 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 and I'm not taking off. Ha! Huh? It will be devastating. It, no, 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 it will. I can't, I can't, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. That when the rapture takes place and I find myself here and all that have gone, it will not happen to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our priority, if that's our priority, we live every day, focus every day on that and say we know as a kingdom servant, he's coming back again. Our work is not in vain. Our service, being it, cleaning the church, you know, after the service today now, some people will come and you see them, when some of us must have gone, maybe back to our home, sleeping, relaxing, some people will be here ensuring this place is clean. Do we like it? It's very beautiful. It's a work of some people. Praise God. And God will bless them. Trust me, either you say amen or not, God will bless them. <laughs> Sorry, it's the scripture, so it's not, it's not me. Sorry, don't mind, don't mind my mind. Uh, forgive me, please. So, they serve. It was wash the toilet, clean this place, and it, quite a number of people secretly. That some people who serve in this church that you don't even know they serve. They won't come to the altar and be like maybe Pastor Jude or so. Sorry, sir. <laughs> some people they won't come to the to the to the stage. But behind the scene, they are doing the work of the kingdom. Do you think God will forget those people? No. No. Well, God is not mocked. That's what scripture says. God is not mocked. What a man so that shall he reap. That shall he reap. So you can't do eye service for God. Because pastor is here, let me just show that I'm cleaning the church. You are doing it for pastor. You are doing it for pastor. Some people behind the scene, they are doing a glorious work. Those are kingdom servants that we are talking about. They prioritize the things of the kingdom. And I pray God will reward every kingdom servant in this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I said, you say amen or not, God will reward them. The heart of a kingdom servant. What, how is their heart, their passion? The heart of a kingdom servant is, is the core of the servant. What drives the servant? What exactly is driving them? Why someone will just come maybe on Saturday and say, let's meet in the church. We want to come and clean the church when you know you can make money in that hour. I'm just talking about sanitation today. I don't know why my mind is going to sanitation team. <laughs> mm, praise God. The question is, what drives your heart as a servant in his vineyard to do what you are doing? I think we need to start asking ourselves that question every day. If you are serving, what exact, why are you serving? A, any servant in the house of God, you need to ask yourself that sincere question. If you don't have answer to it, please ask again. That means you are not serving well. If you are serving because um, just to show that you belong to a, a unit, you have your reward already. If you are serving because you just want to please man, ah, you have done your son, you have done yourself no good. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Servants, obey in all things your master according to the flesh. Not with what? I service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing who? Pastor. I, I thought I saw Pastor there. Or oh, maybe, maybe uh, he said, Servant, verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it. 
heartily. As unto Pastor Jude. <laughs> As unto the Lord. And not unto men. Even though the choir leader may say, you have to come and sing this part. Oh, you, have, you, have, you are not singing well. Go down. The choir leader can say that. But if you have a singleness of heart and your service is not unto men, uh, no apology. It's unto God. It's unto God. Oh, let me skip the other. You can, you can read the other scriptures. Essentials. Essentially, a man's heart is, a wicked, is wicked until such person comes to the light of God's words. The Bible actually said it, that the heart of a man is desperately wicked. He said, who can know it? Do you know my heart? Do you know what I'm thinking of? No. No. But God sees every heart. He knows everything. So, if the reason why I serve in the house of God or I don't serve is just to, to show that I have the power. I have failed. I have failed. The story of our Lord Jesus Christ, the watching of the disciples' feet. Look at that example. See the heart in it. It's a very long one, but I will just skip it a little uh, Matthew twenty twenty eight. Matthew chapter uh, chapter twenty verse twenty eight. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. You see, this is the essence of servanthood. Why we serve in the house of God? Yeah. Why some people may please apologies if you don't belong to any unit. I'm not saying that you are a bad person. You are, you are very, your soul is more precious to God than the church. And so you are more precious. But the essence is that Jesus here said, the Son of Man came not to sit down and be saved. Jesus has the power to be saved. Right? He can command. You know, when Peter caught, when they were to arrest him, when Peter caught uh, one of those people's ear, Jesus, ah, Peter, no, no, I can't. If I need help, I will just call legions of angels. They will just call. They will march down and finish these people up. I'm not here for that. He has the power to sit and just say, you, Peter, get me water. Uh, John, uh, go to... There's a one restaurant, social so place. Get me some food there. Just sit down and command. Jesus can do that. He, he has everything to do with that. But here is what it says. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to what? To minister. That is what we do in the house of God. To minister to others. Every department, be it DPCs, daily prayer chains, to minister to others. And I was coming, I was listening to uh, Focus on the Family, and they were t talking about the essence of church. And one of the facilitators there said, anybody, any single, any serious-minded Christian must belong to not just being a, ch a church member, but the small group in the church. That there are virtues being released in those small groups. That's the DPCs. Eh? where someone will come and share the word, someone will come, any prayer point, oh, please, can you pray with me? I'm believing this. That is the essence of Christianity. That is the essence, the secret of a church. The secret of a church. So those are service in the house of God. The heart to be served. Not to serve, but to serve. Not to, not to be served, to serve. So if you don't serve, it is a call for kingdom servanthood. Please, make yourself one. In any way you can, in any way you can, just try and serve. God will give you the strength in Jesus' name. Luke 6, 45. Luke 6, 45. Let's look at what it says. Wow. 
A good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, the hands move. <laughs> the mouth speak. <laughs> it is the, I, I'm adding my own. Sorry, pardon me to add my own addition to it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, and the hand move, the leg move. Eh? Yes. Do you know why? People that are key people is because they've made, premeditated it. And that's why the hand can move. So, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, the hand move. <laughs> I'm adding my own, please. It's my own. Don't, it's not from the scripture. I'm just adding my own to it. <laughs> So we saw the parable of the ten talents. Pastor Jude actually talked about it last, um, last week, about one servant that felt like, eh, my master, <laughs> does he think he wise, is wise? <laughs> he gave me one talent, he said I should go and trade with it. <laughs> Let me just go and hide it for him. <laughs> Look at him, stupid guy. I, I don't want to go further on that because Pastor Jude already gave very good analogy about it last, last, last week. So, about the talent, the heart. What is the heart? Why others are trading with their talent? He felt, his heart felt like, does he think he's wise? Let me just go on. That is what he thought in his heart. And he acted. He acted. Amen. Excuse me. The love of God, the love of the kingdom servant. We actually see that the love of God is agape love, and the kingdom servant is actually meant to have that as well. And look at what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says. If we have this, if you speak in tongues like angels, if you can do this, if you, even if you can jump, you can preach, and the whole Calgary will come and listen to you, but without love. Just, you are just a, 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 a tinkling cymbal. <laughs> A sounding brass. That's the analogy. You're just more or less like a noise, a noise maker. So, the, 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 the top of everything is love. And as a kingdom servant, it's compulsory that we have this attribute. Not in words, but in action. Mm, not in words. I can come here and profess that I have love. So I mean, if I ask how many, of, how many of us have love, trust me, eh? all of us will raise our hands, but not in words, but in action. John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world, we know that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Genesis, let's read first John 4, 20. 1 John 4, verse 20. If a man says, I have love, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So if I can't love Sister Susan, then I can't love God. That's the interpretation, right? Forget about it. The word brother there could be a sister as well. So when Bible is referring to brother at times, it's also referring to sisters in that same context. If I can't love the person I'm seeing, what about, have you seen God before? How many of us have seen God before? Yeah. But if I can't love the one I'm seeing, how can I say I love God? Eh? I'm deceiving myself. Mm. It is everlasting and sacrificial. That's the love of God. The love of God gives. This is agape love of God. It's freely given whether the giver receives the same level of love in return or not. Our service in the, is an expression of worship to the, Lord, to the Lord. And we serve to express our love. You see that? Eh? Our service is an expression of worship. It's an expression of love. So how we serve shows how we love. Do we get that? Maybe I should repeat it again. How we serve so shows how we love God. 
And I pray God will give us the grace in Jesus' name. The love of God compels us to win souls for, for him. Our love for God functions more when we are fruitful in bringing more souls into the kingdom. First John chapter 3, verse 18. Let's read that. First John chapter 3, verse 18 and John 14, 15. First John 3, 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but what? In deed. That is, in the doing and in truth. In deed and in truth. John chapter 14, 15. It says, John 14, 15. If ye love me, do what? Keep my commandments. So it's the commandment of God that we should win so for him. It's the commandment of God. It's the commandment of God. On Sunday, was it on Sunday or so? Uh, was it Pastor Jude that was asking, when last did we talk to someone about Christ? So he said we should pick our phone and do the evangelism on the phone by sharing the service. I did that, actually. Even though the group I shared it to, they came back to me and said, what is the, why are you sharing this in this group? I said, I didn't know, but I've shared it. <laughs> Praise God. I apologize, actually. It was actually a different group, a very kind of, but I've shared it. Somebody now came and said, why are you sharing this? We don't allow this. Everybody wants to share the same thing. I said, I'm so sorry. Sincerely speaking, I didn't know. I didn't know why my hand touched it. But, <laughs> but I've shared it anyways. <laughs> Praise God. Occupy till I come. Luke 19, verse 13. Wow. Luke 19, 13 says, And he called the ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Do what? Some version says, Do business till I come. That's what some version of the Bible says. It said, Do business with it till I come. You see, I should like to say, a kingdom servant is a business person. Permit me to say that because that scripture says, It said, Do business till I come. So a kingdom servant do business. What kind of business? God's business. Because we're talking about the kingdom servant tool. So a kingdom servant do God's business. Eh? When they were looking for Jesus and they found him in the temple. He said, oh, why are you looking for me? Care not that I do my, my father's business. I'm doing my father's business. The relationship. Wow. Hey. The relationship of the kingdom servant. The kind of relationship. God desires us to have a daily communication with him. He desires our adoration, our worship, and commitment. According to the Bible text, here we see God's intent for a relationship with Adam and Eve. That's Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Let me this out. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in this garden, garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife and his hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, God, among the trees of the garden. So God intends to have a relationship with his servant. So it's compulsory that we develop that. We need to recognize, in, we need to recognize the relationship with our God. We must begin to, by being in the right alignment with him. So our heart must be aligned without grudges, without, uh, without, any, without having someone in mind. Eh? I, said, I said it before. Anytime we, are, we want to do family prayer, and uh, maybe myself and my wife have some, my wife will just tell me, let's not put our praying because there's no use. God will not hear that prayer. Is it truth? Is it truth? Even though I want to do stronger than say, let's just pray for the, for the sake of the children. Let's pray so that we just lead them and pray for the day. He will just tell me, God will not hear. Yes, God will not hear. And it's the truth. It's the truth. God will not hear. Our, our heart must be aligned to God. Our relationships are more important than anything else. That's John 15 verse 5. It must be vertical, forced to God, and horizontal to people. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Covenant relationship test of our faith. Tithes and offering. You see, it's actually a sign of relationship. A servant, you know, you shouldn't be cajoled to give a tithe. You shouldn't be, um, uh, kind of, well, 
you know you don't need to be uh, pumped like a football uh, a ball that you need to pump they pump you then you now swell up and say yes I will not give my tithe now no no it should come naturally praise God then obedience of God's of kingdom servant the obedience of kingdom servant obedience simply means hearing the word of God and acting on it a servant is under authority what was the essence of Jesus who is who is a deity and came in the form of a flesh. He was God, but made himself of no reputation. He was obedient to death. No, that's one. He made himself of no reputation with his disciple. He was identified by a kiss. Imagine Jesus being with the disciple and they couldn't recognize Jesus. Oh, my time is up. Uh, pastor is standing already. That's all for today. God bless us. Happen for Jesus. Make it louder. Give him all the glory. Let's lift up our hands and appreciate him. Father, comfortably seated. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Deacon, for that awesome, awesome time. I know if I left you, you would take us the next 30 minutes, uh, and then the time is um, fast running out. Hallelujah. Now, brethren, the characteristics of Kingdom Servanthood Part 1. Coincidentally, we are going to continue with other attributes of Kingdom Servanthood next week as well. This is Part 1. We'll take Part 2 next week. A couple of things have been said. Uh, who is a kingdom servant? We already know. One who serves God. And you know, the word is very raw. Very raw. And for somebody who says, how can I be a servant? Well, that's the way up. That is the way up. There is no better name to call a servant than a servant. Abraham, my servant. Moses, my servant. Joshua, my servant. Paul, my servant. All of them, servants of the Lord, serving the Lord, serving the Lord. Now, by analogy, Jesus is the head of the church. And you, are, you and I are his hands and feet. So somebody wakes up in the morning, the head is working perfect, but the leg refuses to move. The hand refuses to swing. And the body, the heart refused to pump. The eyes shut down. The ears, I'm not hearing to the nose, no breathing. You know that person is dead. That's exactly the position of anyone who is supposed to be the hands and feet and the eyes and the leg of Jesus, but refuses to use that part of the body. I'm trying to bring it home to you. So you wake up in the morning and your hands are like this and are not working. You know, there's a problem. There is a big problem in the kingdom today. Many hands and feet and eyes and nose and intestines, they are not doing their function. They are not living. And so many, several things have been said. Where is your heart? Your priority? What's your priority? You have a servant. Let's now assume that you have somebody who serves you in the house. Whose priority is to when you want to eat at the table, he wants to sit at the table with you. Think about it. You are at the table, it's time for breakfast or lunch or dinner, and then the servant says, let's sit down together. And we're all watching and looking and I expect the food to serve us. So what's your priority as a kingdom servant? Number one is the kingdom. Because you are not a servant just like that. You are a kingdom servant. So your power, first priority will be the kingdom. And do you know what I've noticed, brethren? That what you prioritize other than kingdom today will leave you tomorrow. What you prioritize other than kingdom today. And it was a good analogy that Dickin gave us. Should I choose this shift or should I choose kingdom? I choose shift. One day the shift will shift you. Sincerely speaking, because, see, the recorder is the rewarder. 
It may be quiet. Nobody may be there. At the time you are making the decision, only you know. But as you are doing it, God, because you are a spirit, your spirit has reported to God that this man chose shift above kingdom. Your spirit reports. He doesn't need to talk to you. Your spirit reports directly to the Bible calls God the father of spirits. Your spirit will not even tell you, won't discuss, but it just reports. You think nobody else knows. The father of spirit already knows. And he's the rewarder. So brethren, that's why it says, seek ye first, not second. If you have a chance to choose first, what do you choose? Kingdom or worldly affair? Oh, you pay, I need to pay my bills. Yes. The father knoweth how knoweth that you need such. That's what Matthew 6.33 says. The father knoweth that you need those things and he will provide them for you. I've lived my life prioritizing kingdom. So when he said to me, give me, boy, give me this job, it didn't cost me anything. I didn't make myself, I didn't choose my career. He chose it for me. He gave me. Early in life, at age of 24, chartered accountant and been working and working. I've practiced it for almost 30 years. Practiced it for almost, sorry, 26 years at the time he called me to give it to him. So it wasn't a big deal. And has he left me? Am I lean? Am I dead? No, I'm alive. He's taking care of me. I'm his responsibility. So make yourself God's responsibility. Let him take care of you. Serve him. And the way to do it is service. There are no two words. I can't tell you, brethren. I can't, I can't you know, <laughs> I don't know how to put it other than say, serve God. Say, I will serve God. Let's serve him. Let's serve him. There is more to this life than bread and butter. There is more to this life than dollars and pounds and cents. There is more to life. The one who sent us here sent us here on assignment, on a loan. You are here, you and I are here for a season. We may be here 120 years, but it's a very tiny proportion of the whole spectrum of our life. So when we all meet at the feet of Jesus, what will he be telling him? What did you do with your time? Oh, well, I went to work, 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 I went to work. What are you going to be rewarded for? Nothing. That shall not be your portion. So think kingdom first. It talks about obedience of a servant. The relationship of a kingdom servant. You are even serving, serving. With all the money you are making, you are not even tithing. You choose kingdom, you choose a service, your own service, above kingdom, and at the end of the day, you eat both God's own and your own. <laughs> oh, Maria, Lift up your hands, receive grace. I receive grace to be a kingdom servant in the name of Jesus. So many things, the heart of a kingdom servant. We didn't finish it, but please go home. This material is loaded, very, very loaded. The relationship of a kingdom servant. Who do you have a relationship with? God or the world? The world or the world? The love of a kingdom servant. Occupy till I come. What, what drives your heart? Obedience. Anyone who lives in disobedience, can I tell you where their end is? The Bible calls them that the prince of this world has them in, the, in his hand. He said, the prince of this world came and looked for me and he found nothing in me. And then he was talking about a set of people. He said, children who are called the children of disobedience, they have been blinded. You don't belong there. So live kingdom lifestyle. May the Lord help us. Questions, comments, questions online and online. Let's ask questions. It's time for questions. Bring in the questions so that we can stay on point and then uh, stay on focus. Questions? Anyone with a question? Upstairs? Yes, Daddy. Hallelujah. Okay. That says, 
I no longer call you slave servant, but sa- because servant doesn't know what the master does. <laughs> I don't know what is more, which one is more important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know why I'm laughing? No. At the Bible study committee, we asked ourselves that question. Okay. Praise that the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, I'm no longer call you servants. And so, because a servant doesn't know what the master is doing. Now, uh, and the way we answered it is, there are mysteries in this kingdom. There are mysteries. Yet, another scripture says, in, in Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 and 27, it says, the one that God honors is the one who serves. He gives preference to one who serves. He has called us as servants. And of course, in Ma- uh, Philippians chapter 2, I uh, will look at more of that as we go on. It talks about the servanthood of Jesus, that he did not thought it robbery to be equal with God, but left his throne and everything and came down in the form of a servant, right, and died the death of a common criminal. So what Jesus was saying there is, listen, I've called you servants so far, so far, so far, but behind that servanthood there is friendship. I'm not calling you as a servant to just put you down there because you are a servant, you can't see the kingdom, you can't do anything, you are useless, the only thing is just run errands for me. No, you are my servant, yet you are my friend. It's just like Jesus being called the lion and the lamb. Can you explain it? He's a lion, but still a lamb. Can we understand that mystery? The lion and the lamb. So there is a heart of lion in him, but he came as a lamb, sacrificial lamb and service. So we are principally Jesus' servant. Why he said that is not to make you feel that, oh, servant, you know, like there's a group of people in their religion, they say they are servants of God. It's different, slaves of God. It's different. Don't look at yourself in that light at all. You are my servant, yet you are my friend. So we are servants of the Lord here on his assignment, yet we are his friends. He releases kingdom secrets to us. Who do you tell your secrets to? Your friends. Kingdom friends, right? So we are his friends. He releases kingdom secrets to us, yet we are serving him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. So any other questions? Comments? Yes, Mama. Hallelujah. Just uh, the microphone. Hello. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I'll be hearing about uh, working in, in the, in, inside the church, doing this in the church. Mm-hmm. I want to know the difference today. Mm-hmm. As a Christian, working inside the church and still doing the work of God outside, what is the difference? If I don't choose to be a choir, I don't choose to be a cleaner. Okay, okay. But I'm doing the, the, the good work of God outside. Okay, praise God. Yeah. Okay, praise God. I, I, I get your question now. So, yeah. the, the structure of the church, there, are, there is the universal church, the church invisible, which is the church of the firstborns those who have been redeemed and washed by the blood, the ones that Christ died for. It has no structure. It has no particular place. There is the invisible church and there is the visible church. The visible church is Joy Overflow International Church. And everyone, so if all of us come to Joy Overflow International Church today and say, well, I am serving outside, I'm not serving in Joy Overflow, there will be no pastor there will be no deacon. When it's time for communion, you go and take your communion yourself. You go and pick it. You bring, in fact, you bring your communion from home. When it's time for you to use the washroom, you will go home, use the washroom, and come back here because there will be no washroom. Do you get it, man? So in the physical church, the visible church, there is the need for us to put our hands on the plow and walk for Jesus. We are all involved in ministry work outside. For instance, I'm a Gideon for life. We serve Bibles and do and have been there since for life since age 27. 
immediately after I got married, I joined Gideon's. So for 27 years, I've been serving. And there are some other mission work that I'm involved with outside. But yet in Jesus' physical church, here I am, a pastor, serving, making myself available for all to serve. So we all need to belong. We all belong, not we need. We belong to the visible church, visible church overflow. We belong also to the invisible church. And the assignment he has for us is varied. If the assignment outside is stopping you from doing the assignment inside the church, I can understand that I'm so occupied, I travel a lot, my airplane, you know, I fly from one place to the other, distributing Bibles, and I fly around the world, and I do all sorts, and I don't have for the local time for the local church, I'm still going to get rewarded. But if after I do all that, and I still have some time, and I'm not using it in the visible church, Jesus will ask me, what did you do in my church? So we carry both. It is not this or that. It is this and that. Uh, why, why I ask this question? Yes, yes uh, some area in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the, uh, the chapter. That is, it said that when this prophet prepared for war, mm -hmm. God asked that prophet to take all his soldiers to the river and mm -hmm. lick water Gideon. with their tongue. Mm -hmm. So, but not all were able to lick the water. Mm -hmm. What happened to those who, who will not be able to lick the water? They went back home. <laughs> they, they went back home, and God didn't use them. God didn't use them. Uh, I think it was about 300 people that they used after initial, how many? 40,000 or so. 40,000 people showed up. Oh, we want to walk, we want to walk. Only 320 people qualified. Less than 1%. So the others went back home. Aha. Praise God. So we need to be involved in the physical church. Yes, Sister Delcina, question. Are you getting blessed from this? Yes. Praise God. What qualifies to be a great kingdom servant? Um, perhaps, uh, do you only... What if you serve outside in the community and do not serve in the church? That's or what she just asked. And that's what we just answered. Okay. It's not either or. You must carry both. Serve outside, okay. serve inside. Okay, that's what I want to do. Yeah, exactly. You must serve inside, you must serve outside. Praise God. Any other question? Okay. If there are no other... Uh, okay, praise God. Any question online? Pastor Jude? Okay, praise God. So, brethren, let us um, serve. Let's help. Let, we, are not, we are not helping God when we serve. We are helping ourselves. The reason I say that is there is something much deeper than all of this we are talking about. It is called the will of God. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sa and ma, there is something that is written in heaven about you. Are you doing it? There is an assignment God has put your name on which you are going to be judged. It's called the judgment of works. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give account of what we have done in the flesh, whether they be good or bad. There is a judgment in heaven called the judgment of works. And you are going to be judged based on what was written because the Bible says, And the books were opened. So look at what was written about you in heaven. You are supposed to be an usher in heaven. Heaven has the record. You are supposed to be an usher at Joy Overflow International Church. Are you doing it? That's the judgment we're going to face. There's judgment of works. It's not, oh, whether just enter heaven and begin to walk around and enjoy. No. Well, the Bible says we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ 
to give account of what we have done in the flesh, whether they are good or bad. They will bring the roll call and say, Sonny, Adeni, it is time. And then on the rooftop, before the whole gathering of saints, they will begin to play my life. The story of my life from when I was born little and I grew up and I grew up and I began to go to church. I began to love God. The things that I did, all of them will be put on the table. And then they are going to say, this one you did well. That's a crown of righteousness. This one you didn't do well. Are we prepared? Shall we rise up? We are going to go before the communion table. But before that, I want us to pray. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 is the communion scripture. Look at it. Let's read together. Since all his children have flesh and blood, so Jesus came, became human to fully identify with us. He did this so that he could experience death and annihilate the effect of the intimidating accuser who holds against us the power of death. By embracing death, Jesus sets free those who live their entire lives in bondage to the tormenting dread of death. So what that means is the devil used to hold the scare. Say, I will kill you. I will kill you. I will kill you. But the Bible says, Jesus came. The word annihilate means to eradicate, to delete, to destroy, to completely clean out so that there will be no trace of it. Can I let you know that Jesus packaged that power in his flesh and blood. So as you partake of this, the devil has no right over your body. He has no right to kill you. He has no right to kill you. If Jesus already died and packaged himself in him, what is the devil looking for in your body? That's a very big question. What is he looking for? Why does he need your life? Jesus already died. You don't need to die again. He already died for you. So tonight, with violence of faith, I want you to pray one minute. Say, Jesus already died. Satan, you can't have my body. You can't kill me before my time. No. No. I reject every dread of death. I reject every scare of death. In the name of Jesus, I am living for Jesus. Are you praying right now? Be violent in that prayer. Tell Jesus, Jesus, you packed yourself in the flesh and blood. You died for me. No more death for me. In the name of Jesus, my body will not suffer anymore. No sickness, no disease, no pain. Jesus annihilated. He destroyed. He cleaned out the dread of death. Lara Katayata. Every scare of death, Jesus took it out of the way. I am no longer bondage, in bondage to death. No. Satan, the power, you used to have the power. But Jesus took it from you. I am free. I am free. I am free. I declare total liberty. Look at that part of your body right now. Begin to prophesy to your body. Healing. Deliverance. I am free. I am free forever. Jesus paid the price. Satan can't hold me down anymore. I am free forever. I am free. Good health. Good all oh, good health every day of my life, not for a moment. Every day I am entitled to good health. I am entitled to good health. I am entitled to a good life. Jesus packaged it in this communion. As I partake of it right now, the same life, Mabrahate, in Jesus enters into me. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Be violent. Tune up your violence. Labra katayata. Narabandeke. E sindatahata. Riado shakatatata. Zarabide. E plarabahatundia. Hey. I am free. I am free. <laughs> I am free. Free from bondage. Free from death. Free from sickness. Free from sin. Free to serve the living God. To serve as a kingdom servant. Free to do his will. According as it is written in me, for me in heaven. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. As you have said, so it is. 
In Jesus' precious name, shall we partake of it with boldness and courage this morning. This is my accelerated results this year. Thank you, Jesus, for my covenant liftings in Jesus' name. Amen. We may please have our seats in the presence of the Lord. What a powerful word from heaven today. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless his words into our hearts, and may we be hearers and doers of the word in Jesus' mighty name. It is offering time. It is offering time, my blessing time. Hallelujah. Why, for those of us on land, we are preparing our offering, putting them in the envelope and labeling them appropriately. Those of us online, we can visit the website www.joyoverflow.church or you can also give through e-transfer or interact transfer to joyoverflowchurch at gmail.com. Why we are doing that, let's quickly read from Luke 6.38. It says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaking together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you will get back. Someone will get generously back in Jesus' mighty name. If you are packaged your offering, your tithe, your first fruit offering, your seed offering, your thanksgiving offering, my prophet offering, and if you are giving towards the building project or towards the annual faith convention sacrifice, put that under the building project. Hallelujah. May we rise on our feet and begin to speak to God concerning our offering, our tithe our seed, whatever financial commitment that you are giving tonight, speak to God concerning it. This is an act of service. We heard in the word today that service is also an act of worship. We have come to honor the Lord with our substance, to worship him. Let us speak to him based on what we have brought that seed for. What we sow, we shall reap. Father, we thank you because you know our hearts. And we know that you have seen why we have brought this in obedience to your word. And Father God, in expectation of your blessings that come with this. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Let's cast our offering rejoicing as the choir ministers. Higher, higher, every day I lift my Jesus higher, every day. Higher, higher. 
Father, we lift up these tithes, offerings, seeds, prophet offering, building project, thanksgiving offerings, and any other commitment we have before you. We say, Lord, accept them in the name of Jesus. Let our givings tonight be acceptable before you. Accept it as an honor, accept it as worship, accept it as service. And Father, release your blessings upon every giver tonight that will return to testify of your goodness in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Hallelujah. You may please have your seats in the presence of the Lord as we welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time. If this is your first time at Joy Overflow International Church, we want to welcome you specially. Indicate by a show of hand or give us thumbs up if you are online. Hallelujah. Amen. For those of us online, please visit our website, www.joyoverflow.church. Complete the prayer request form with all your duties and we'll be getting in touch with you. If you have any prayer request, write it down also on that form and we'll be praying with you. And we believe you shall return with your testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and join us again. Hallelujah. This church... Joy Overflow International Church is soon becoming a place of worship for how many people? The hundreds of thousands. What must we do? Let's watch out, take our place, and be ready for what is already happening. Finally, let's remain focused on peace, love, and joy, and maintain zero tolerance for sight. Hallelujah. With Jesus, joy, let's welcome God's servant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. I'm sure you are blessed tonight. To God alone be all the glory. Now, brethren, um, two things. Coming Monday, there's going to be a membership class. Hallelujah. And it's going to be online via Zoom. And this announcement is going to those of us who are online. You've been with us for a while. And you'd like to become a member of Joy Overflow International Church. Uh, please send a message to this phone number. If you want to write it down. 1-403-400-6727. 1 4006727 include your name your email address and your phone number and then we'll contact you and add you on and then we'll add you on to the group the group is already formed the messages have been sent out the emails have been sent out gmail invites have been sent and it's happening on monday also for those who would like to be water baptized uh, we can do water baptism online praise god we have to do it on land. So you have to be in Calgary <laughs> to be water baptized. It's going to hold in these premises. Uh, a number of people have indicated already. So if you like to be water baptized and you are online, please also send a, a text of your information to that number. 1-403-400-6727. I take it again. 1-403-400-6727. Send a text your name, your uh, e email, as well as your phone number, and we add you onto the group. And that is going to hold on Tuesday. 
Tuesday, next week, uh, March the 23rd, we are going to be water baptizing a number of us. Mark 16, 16 says, those who believed, those who are saved and are baptized, no. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 16. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. So there is a portion of your salvation, ultimate salvation that water baptism plays. If you have been baptized wrongly before or in a way that you didn't know what you were doing, please, I will encourage you, do it again. Do it again. Hallelujah. Are we blessed tonight? Let's lift up our hands. Let's rise up, lift up our hands, appreciate God, give Him all the glory. Say thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your mercy, for your love. I will serve you to the end of my life. I made a vow. I made a pledge. The way up is the way of service. The way up is the way of service. I will serve you to the end. I have received the power to serve you tonight. And I give myself to you. Full service to you. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We we'll bless your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. As you go tonight, the hand of the Lord will rest upon you. The glory of the Lord will cover you. Between now and Sunday, you will encounter God. There shall be a mighty visitation of God for you. God, the rewarder, will reward you. I said the rewarder will reward you. He is the recorder of the things you are doing and he is the rewarder. He shall reward you abundantly. Blessings shall pursue, overtake you on all sides in the name of Jesus. You are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. So shall it be. Now I hear in my spirit. Brethren. Someone here, online or online, you have escaped a consumption. A consumption that was determined against you by reason of your participation tonight, you have escaped it. By reason of your presence in Zion, tonight you have escaped. No matter the way the enemy will try to manipulate, it will never get you. You are free forever in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for sealing up this and perfecting the health, the goodness and mercy to that individual. I give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. With Jesus' joy shall we together share the covenant. God will show me the path of life. For in his presence is the fullness of my joy. And at his right hand are my players forevermore. Peace, love, and joy. Let's turn to somebody as to share this. My glory is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. Turn to somebody else and reassure them. My glory is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. No loss, no pain, no shame for you. In Jesus' name. With Jesus' joy shall we take our covenant song. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will praise your name. I will praise your name. I will worship you. I will worship you. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord.